the change each day is so small that most of us don't even notice it. But every day since the December solstice just before Christmas, the Northern Hemisphere has experienced a minute or two or three more of daylight every day. And today we're already up to more than 10 hours on our way to the March equinox. Incrementally, day by day, not much, is it? But now, after these weeks, that hour really has amounted to something, and who of us is not aware of that blessed extra hour of light? Many things in nature happen slowly. And the same is true of the spiritual life, particularly as we grow in wisdom, which has, excuse me, which has been treasured in our religious heritage and contributes a goodly chunk to the Bible and fairly describes the scripture readings from our mass today. So let us this morning examine and reflect especially on the wisdom found in the conclusion to the Sermon on the Mount. More specifically today, we look at the teaching on the meaning of discipleship. With metaphors of salt and light, Jesus reveals the intimate connection between what a disciple is and what a disciple does. It leads us to reflect on the ordinariness of life permeated by the extraordinariness of grace. we see that true wisdom really is found in that which is ordinary. It makes it a very apt reflection for a Sunday in ordinary time. We live in a world where appearances frequently matter more than they should. We often drive ourselves to a devastating distraction over how we look and how impressive what we do appears. Contrary to this predominating tendency, Jesus teaches us that what we do flows from who and what we are. We can enlighten the world with the message of the gospel because our lives have been transformed by that gospel. In other words, we can serve others only because we have been saved by God's grace, which then uses us as agents of that same grace in the lives of others. In the final analysis, we need only stay close to the cross. It means that we embrace everything that Jesus embraced, and it means that we disdain everything that he disdained. This may sound impossible, but it isn't. It is the truth about the way God works. Extraordinary things are accomplished through ordinary people. Jesus grew up 
as the son of a carpenter. Several of the apostles were fishermen. And Paul, the great Saint Paul, he was a tent maker. And us, we are students, we are professors, cooks and maintainers, deans and secretaries. And like Paul, we come to life and ministry with fear, trepidation, weakness, and trembling. And when we honestly acknowledge that, we can see that it is the spirit and power of God that works the wonders. And furthermore, that God works them through mundane elements and events. The net product or effect. Light, salt. Again and again in these Sundays of ordinary time, we see how God chooses the weak things of the world to confound the strong. The insignificant people outstrip those who are celebrities. Unfortunately, we do not always appreciate the significance of this in our own lives. Either we want to do spectacular things for God, or we ignore the possibilities for good that common things can provide. If we could once really realize that our ordinary lives are waiting to break forth with the brilliance of God, we would embrace them with enthusiasm and utmost gratitude. As children, many of us learn by heart the corporal and spiritual works of mercy. We learn that we can practice them in every walk of life. Today's readings remind us of this. These works can be as simple as sharing food with a neighbor going through the problems of illness or perhaps the death of a family member or opening our homes to the sick and the elderly, our relatives who need our support in their old age, or simply giving directions to a stranger who seems perplexed about the circumstances and situation in which they find themselves, or taking time out to help a child learn a new task. Or perhaps we simply need to share some of the wisdom that we have already gained from this journey through life with somebody who has not yet trod as far. We may not be asked to perform extraordinary feats, but all disciples of Christ are called upon to do the ordinary things with extraordinary grace. The change each day is so small that you may not have noticed. But ever since you began to take your faith seriously, you have grown in knowledge and grace and wisdom, passing from the darkness of winter into spring's hopefulness. There's no big secret here, supposedly found only within the walls of convents and monasteries. It really is quite simple. Prayer and sacraments. they really do increase our light. It therefore follows that just as day follows dawn, the closer we remain to the one light, the brighter our lights will be. How much more brightly they will shine in a world 
so desperately in need of the hope that we bring.